Hi, this is Nick with Wolfman Repairs, and today I have something a little different. I have my Husqvarna 360 BT, which is a uh, wind machine, also known as a leaf blower. Anyway, so the problem I'm having with this is when I rev it up, it doesn't want to rev up, it just dies. It idles fine, but then when you try to give it some throttle, it just wants to die. All right, so let me go ahead and demonstrate what this is doing. Take this carburetor cover off. Choke on, prime it a bit. Now when I go ahead and spray some carburetor cleaner in there, you'll see that it revs up and it wants to run but won't run when I try to put, give it throttle. See how it dies out like that? That means that the carburetor is definitely gummed up with something that's not getting enough fuel. Because when you give, give it more throttle, it means you're letting more air into the carburetor and it's just not getting enough fuel. So let's try to take this carburetor apart and go ahead and clean it out. Now, let me put this back together. So first you have this cover on here that has these two thumb screws, one on the top, one on the bottom. You unscrew that, it comes right off. Then you have your filter. Then you have your screen. So then you have your carburetor bolts, one here, one here. And that is a T27. Focus, T27. This whole assembly should come off just like that. You have a metal gasket. Put this together so I don't lose it or get it dirty. And here's your carburetor. Here's the O-ring. That's the gasket. Here's your two fuel lines. This is for the throttle. Just be a cover on here. All right, I need to get a couple of wrenches. Gotta get this throttle off of there. So, plan A is to clean this carburetor out. Hopefully that works and we can throw it right back on there because I'd rather use the OEM carburetor that came with it instead of this uh, this other one here I bought from eBay and uh, yeah it just doesn't look as nice as the one that's on there. I mean it'll probably do the same thing but you never know. Sometimes these perform great, sometimes they are junk. So all right well, let's get into it. I'll go get those wrenches and I'll be right back. Okay, it looks like a eight millimeter fits on the outside nut and a 10 millimeter fits on the inside nut. Let's go ahead and loosen this up. This actually was really loose. 
first let me get this cable unhooked. It's a little plastic clip on here. Keeps it in place. Okay, so for this, you pull the throttle all the way, you hold on to the throttle shaft, and the cable should pop right out. You unscrew this here. Okay, and that's undone. Looks like we should just be able to. The carburetor should come right off at this point. It's a little stuck because I ripped the gasket. It's fine, I got another gasket, thankfully. Okay, I got the two fuel hoses. Someone remember the green goes up here, and the black one goes down there. Okay, the green one's off. I want to be careful to not rip through that. Let me go get a, a pick. Yeah, so for for hoses in general. If you're able to get in between the hose and the fitting with a pick, you usually don't break the hose. You're usually able to go all the way around and then the hose will come right off, just like that. So there's our old carburetor. So let's go ahead and take it apart and uh, see if we could fix it or clean it out all right let me just get set up for that and uh we'll be right back all right so here's the carburetor on my garage floor let's go first thing you want to do is take off these four screws that hold the bowl on there this is the priming bowl I don't think I have the right screwdriver, it's camming out a bit. Seems a bit better. Gasoline should come out of here, so just be prepared. Now these screws are probably pretty long. They hold probably hold the whole carburetor assembly together. You want to be careful when you take this apart. So that you don't rip all the gaskets because the rebuild kit for this was like 30 bucks or something like that and uh, that aftermarket Chinese carburetor was like 15 <laughs>
Okay, so there's your, your primer bulb. Let's take this gasket off on the back. Now, since we already ripped it, doesn't matter. next piece now this is your, your bowl that holds the fuel in it so you don't want to rip this might be another screw under here this gasket's super delicate We rip this, it's game over. And then we gotta go to plan B. Okay. So here's your Here's your needle there that controls the flow of fuel. And this essentially is your bowl that holds the fuel. Let's go ahead and remove the screw for the needle. Looks like it's a tinier screwdriver. Yeah, that should work. Now you gotta be careful here. You see it wants to spring out. This is spring loaded. And getting this back together is gonna to be a pain in the butt. I can tell you that right now. Okay, so here's your needle. Oops. Here's the spring. Right in there is the seat. That controls how much fuel goes into the carburetor. All right, so I don't think it comes, it should come apart a little more, but I don't think we need it to come apart any more than that. I'm gonna take our carb cleaner, I'm gonna spray it in here where the needle goes. it in all the all the holes Oop. yeah you see when we spray it in this one it comes out there Okay, so we spray out all the holes. I would like to get this apart a little more, but I'm afraid we're gonna rip this gasket in here. Let's just give it a try. Oh, okay, it came right off. Excellent. So you can see the seat a little better. That's where the needle pushes up against. It's actually pretty clean. Just give it a good spray. And this is another gasket here. Just like I said, if we rip any of these, it's game over. Yeah, this gasket's not going to come off without uh, without tearing, it seems. I 
don't know if you can see that, but my spray in here sprays through the carburetor. Okay, so I think this is as clean as we're gonna get it. Let's throw it back together and uh, see if it works any better. Okay. This rod goes back in here. Let's see if we get the spring in without flinging it across the garage and never finding it ever again. seems to work. Spray this off again. Put our gasket back on. We haven't sprayed this guy off yet. Now this bowl comes out, I have a replacement one right here, I'm just going to throw that in there because this one's kind of yellowed compared to the new one. Oop, and everything's falling apart. The replacement one doesn't sit right in there. Of course. So we're going to go back to the old one. Okay, start screwing it back together. Now what you want to do with this is uh, screw in a crisscross pattern so you don't warp anything. Now when you get to the point of tightening them, you definitely want to just hand tight, you know, it's really snug. But definitely crisscross pattern. And again, so you don't warp anything. You don't want to go crazy on these because you'll just strip the head out. All right, that's it. So now we're going to focus on getting this old gasket material off of here and uh, you know the new carburetor came with a new gasket so we don't have to worry about that too much it looks like it fits pretty good so let's go ahead and get uh, get scraping on this just gonna go ahead and use a regular old razor blade just be careful not to uh, gouge the aluminum housing of the carburetor If you want to ensure that you don't scrape up the or gouge the housing in the carburetor, you can use a plastic razor blade. And you can be a little more aggressive. You don't want all these shavings to go into your 
engine when uh, we put the carburetor back on. So make sure you spray that out good. like a little carburetor cleaner in the face first thing in the morning <coughs> say that's uh that's good enough so again just make sure it's all clean all right now back to the engine all right same thing on the engine side get this gasket off of here Try not to get anything in these holes. Because that's your intake. And it goes right into the engine. I want to make sure we got every little piece. And spraying it with carb cleaner seems to help break down that gasket a little bit. I have to get a little more aggressive and use the actual razor blade. Just don't want to gouge the metal. Because if you do that, then that's a place for air to leak through. We don't want that to happen. Call that good enough. Take our new gasket and our new uh, our rebuilt carburetor. Throw it all back together. First thing I'm going to do is the hoses. kind of slip on there and they got this little clip clippy D thing can't forget our gasket kind of just have to have 15 hands and hold everything in place at once um, you know what before we put the gasket there let's throw this throttle cable back in Push the throttle all the way forward. And it slides right into that slot. Reinstall this piece. We can tighten it down once the carburetor is up on there. Okay, next is the gasket. housing everything all at the same time so you got your metal piece the housing and the screws go through the gasket and everything t27 like before a crisscross pattern here you know, tighten one down a little bit tighten the other one down a little bit okay this needs to be tightened now the throttle cable okay we're not gonna put the cover or the clip back on yet until we make sure it works right and uh you know i think we're we're ready to test let's just tighten this a little bit more Oh yeah, I need to tighten a little, a lot more. <laughs> I 
Well, it seems to work. Alright, let's uh, put on choke, primer up a bit. Primer bulb seems to be working. I'm not leaking any fuel anywhere, I don't think. Alright, let's uh, give her a try. Primer bulb isn't working. We might have messed something up when we re rebuilt it. Okay, I guess it's time to throw the uh, Chinese carburetor on there and see what happens. That's why we had plan B. Time for plan B. Not sure why this has this red piece up here. Uh, the old one did not have this red piece. Uh, hopefully it works. Bottom cable in there first. Grab the gasket. Those on the back. Actually, put the hoses on first. Now the gasket. This whole assembly. Start tightening down by hand. seems to work all right let's uh, primer up and give it a try it's 
see the primer bulb on this one's getting nice and hard and firm on the one we rebuilt it uh it wasn't so maybe that's an issue maybe we tore a gasket a little bit maybe it's not seated properly i don't know what the case may be let's give this a shot and see what happens though to run great let's uh, reassemble it completely and give it a test so next you got your mesh screen and your filter And your cover. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, let's see if this, uh, I doubt this black cover is going to fit because it's a little different. Now let's see if this clip fits to secure the throttle cable. All right. The little white clip seemed to fit right there. Now let's see if this black clip fits over this. Nope, doesn't look like it fits, which is fine. Just gotta make sure I keep it clean. Yeah, because it's got this red lever in the way. The other one didn't have that red lever. All right. Put this cover back on. I think we're ready to rock and roll. things you might want to consider look out and look out for if you're replacing a carburetor on one of these with an aftermarket carburetor so the aftermarket one has this little red thing on here that I don't know what it does also this one that I bought has this adjustment here now the original one does not have that adjustment so unfortunately I had to adjust this a couple of times so you got to be careful you know when you get one of these aftermarket ones you might need to adjust it a little bit or for this I had to unscrew the screw a little bit um, and it works fine now but just something that you want to look out for if you're dealing with the aftermarket one I might consider going ahead and spending i think it was a hundred and something dollars for the oem one i think i might do that in the future i mean it runs fine right now but uh it definitely wasn't running great so once i adjusted this the screw here now it runs really really good so just something to keep in mind when you're uh buying an aftermarket carburetor Something else you might want to consider if you're doing a carburetor replacement is changing the fuel filter. So if you do that, this on the screw here. Now this is just gonna pull out. It's just on a little 
tab. You gotta get your hook. Reach on in there. Try to hook the fuel line. As far as one handed, I'm gonna try my right hand. Keep pulling, and then your fuel filter will come out. Now all you'd have to do is squeeze that little thing right there, and it'll release the line, and you can replace your fuel filter. Now I already did that, so I don't want to do that again. So put this back in here. Let's shove it back in. Then for, to put the cap back on. Just put one side in, then the other side. Kind of jam it back in there. Get in there. And put the cap back on. Simple as that. Here's what my old fuel filter looked like. It wasn't too bad. I did drop it, so there's a lot more junk on it than there was. So, just something else to consider when doing a carb replacement. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you next time. Oh!